Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. Okay, so I'll leave it to you. Just grab hold of the reference and have a look at all the different versions. But basically, this scripture basically sums up all our experiences in life. Now, you may be thinking, well, what do you mean by that? Um, Look at your experience as a Christian, as a practicing Christian. God promises that if you follow all his commands, he will... he will bless you. He will set you high above all the nations on earth. Okay. That in itself is, is that's just a blessing. That just means you will reign in life. Okay. I'm not necessarily talking about say being a director or being a prime minister or being the president of you. I'm not, uh, that, that's not necessarily saying that. It just means you'll ride above your, your situations. You'll be on top of your world. You'll be in control of your life. And things will go as planned. You'll make advancement when it's time to make advancement. You'll get promoted when it's time to get promoted. You'll you'll move up to your next level when it's time to go up to your next level. Okay, but I'm not really focusing on that today. I'm focusing on the... I'm trying to get you to think about your life. Uh, you may be thinking, well, I've been a Christian for 20 years. I've been going to church faithfully. I have... You know, never I've I've lived according to the commandments of God. I've 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 you know I've been living a life of obedience to God physically, right? And what does that mean? Okay, so a lot of us like to if I if I ask you now and say what does it mean to live according to the commandments of God? Some of you may think of the Ten Commandments, and yes, that's absolutely spot on. That's perfect, okay. And some of you may think, well, you know, there's also the, the you know just basically living a life that God desires. I go to church, I listen to His word, I love the people surrounding me or I, I love my neighbors i look after other people the point is physically you're doing everything you can within your power again i have to emphasize you're not perfect it's not possible to be perfect it's not possible to be holy jesus said no one is good except god right we're, we're not saying when god is not asking you to be perfect but he is asking you to live a life of love basically right so this is what i love about the new testament jesus summed it all up jesus said basically love your neighbor as yourself love god first and then love your neighbor as yourself right so put god first and then put love your neighbor as yourself that means if you love love your neighbor as yourself who's your neighbor your neighbor is everybody who's a human being um and if you're loving them as yourself that means you wouldn't do to other people what you wouldn't do to yourself right and that pretty much simplifies in the old testament the rules are broken down like this deuteronomy 28 that i'm reading if you read all of it, it sums up what will happen if you obey God. And from verse 15 or 16 onwards, it sums up what will happen if you disobey. And it's, so it's, it's, it's basically broken down into blessings and curses. And it's quite intense, right? There's quite a lot of laws. Um, and that, that's, that's all fair and good. And that's, but I want you to focus. Remember, life is spiritual. And I spoke the other day about how King Solomon, um, God visited him in the dream at night and asked him what he wanted. And as we know, Solomon asked for wisdom and sure enough he was given wisdom in in real life in waking life but where did this happen it happened in the dream so my focus is on the spirit realm which is the dreams right the dreams we have um <clears throat> and I'm trying to encourage you to take your dreams seriously they are not a joke <clears throat> so you might be going through life saying but God I am doing all this still I'm not seeing my life excelling still I'm seeing my family riddled with cancer i'm seeing my family go from generational case to generational case i'm just seeing all sorts of negative experiences which is contrary to what your word says so where am i going wrong right so since solomon's covenant was established in the dream this should tell you that there's more to life than just the physical realm that is evidence in itself that there's more to life than the physical realm. If in fact, if anything, the physical realm is as a result of the this other part that you know there's more to life of, and that is the spirit realm. The spirit realm is the beginning of everything. This is why it's possible for people to uh, work witchcraft on other people. They don't do it. People don't attack you physically. They attack you in the spirit realm, 
right? They tie you up in the spirit realm and you can see your life go upside down in the physical realm. Why? Because it's all happened in the physical realm, in the spirit realm. That in itself is evidence. Okay. So anyway, so you may be saying, it says, if you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord, your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. So my question is, uh, why are we not seeing more and more people who are making so much effort to live physically a good life before God? Why are we not seeing them all excel? Why are we not seeing them all just live a completely, you know, beautiful life that all of us can endeavor or that all of us can, can you know, can, so we can all see an example of what it means to follow God and to follow all of God's commands and live successfully. Why are we seeing a lot of Christians suffer? God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And what is that lack of knowledge? Life is in the spirit realm. So you might be following the laws of God physically, but check your dreams. I spoke the other day or yesterday about some of the dreams that we dream that are just so obscene. Some of us commit sexual sins in our dreams. Some of us even murder people in our dreams. You have, We have horrible dreams. We have dreams where you think, what on earth was that, right? The point is that's your spirit man in the dream. Now, no matter how disgusted you might feel about the dream, yes, that's you doing whatever you did in that dream. And that's where all these problems you're seeing in your life, that's where they're coming from. That's where they are. So you are sinning against God, but you may not be sinning physically. You're definitely sinning spiritually against him. This may be such an alien thing to, 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 to hear. You may not be... You may be listening thinking, okay, she's going crazy. Well, look into it. All I'm asking you to do is look into it. These are things that are not taught in the church. The church encourages us to dress a certain way. They encourage us to behave a certain way. They encourage us. They, they focus too much on the physical. Paul said, we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are not seen. The fact that you're seeing so many Christians suffer mercilessly in life, through disease, through poverty, through all sorts of just undesirables, which for a child of God is like, well, if you're such a child of God, why is life your life like this? In fact, some people don't even want to be Christians based on what they see Christians go through. They're like, if if this God, if, if following God means I live a life like that, then no, I don't want to. No, there are people who will just tell you outright and I respect them. I don't blame them. But the problem is, what is it? The point is, we're missing the point. The life is not physical. Don't focus on the physical. Don't spend your life trying to be right physically. Don't spend your life trying to... I'm not saying go out, go out there and go crazy and, and, and do all sorts of crazy things. Definitely not. You know, yes, okay, fair enough. Live your, your, your physical life in a clean way. But don't, don't think that you've nailed it by living the physical realm in a clean way. You need to live a clean life in the spiritual realm. If you're constantly having these dreams, these sexual dreams, these negative dreams, these just these dreams where you're doing things you know you wouldn't do in the physical realm, number one, repent of those dreams. Number two, cancel those dreams. The Bible says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Overcome those, cancel them, nullify them in the spirit realm by the blood of the Lamb. Number three, get yourself into the Word of God. I mean, if you notice every time I speak, it always comes back to this. I don't intend to. I don't set out to talk about the Word of God, but actually it does come back to this. Whatever your spirit man is doing in the dream, you can fortify him. You can, you can make, give him wisdom right? But the Bible says through knowledge shall the just be delivered. You can be delivered from all those evil dreams through the word of God. I mean, yes, you can get people to pray for you, but if you're not reading the word of God for yourself, they'll pray for you and the, 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 the solution will only last for a short while and then you'll go back to those dreams again. So you'll find yourself in those cycles of bad dreams all the time handle things spiritually by feeding yourself. Okay, if you want something to do in the physical realm, get into the word of God. If you want something practical to do uh, in order to lead, to lead this life, this, this life to follow God's commands, get into the word of God. Listen to the word of God. You're not going to, not everything you read, you're going to understand, but just let it play in your mind. And when the time is, is right and when it's relevant, even your spirit man will use that word of God to rebuke anything inappropriate in your dreams. Now, the more you get into the word of God, you will start to notice in your dreams that you start to challenge. In fact, some of you will start to see that in your dreams, the minute you start talking, people run away from you. Those are not people. Those are masquerading spirits that were trying to come and 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 uh, get you to, to sin in one way or the other in the dream. 
but because you started speaking and because when you speak, the word of God comes out of you, they run away from you. The word of God gives you power, guys, and it gives you power where it matters the most. It gives you power in the spirit realm. With the word of God, you can even find yourself in the dream rebuking witches and warlocks. Yes, witches and warlocks do astral project and try to attack people in the spirit realm. You can find yourself rebuking them if you fill yourself with the word of God. If you find that in the dreams you're constantly weak and you're attacked by people all the time, read more of the word of God. Meditate on it. This is why this is why uh, TV programs are such a distraction. They stop you from doing what you need to do to strengthen yourself. You can't do anything. There's so much you can do physically to gain physical strength. There's so much you can do physically to gain main, mental strength. There, there's all these games and what have you that do that, that train your brain. None of that means anything if your spirit man is weak. You're constantly under attack in the spirit realm and you need to do something about that. And how are you going to do that? Like I said, repent of all these evil dreams that you keep having. Um, cancel those evil dreams that you keep having using the word of God. Just say, by the blood of the lamb, I cancel that dream. You start from basics, but the more you get into the word of God yourself, the more you'll start to know what to say at the appropriate times. Then you won't need to be running around across the country looking for people to pray for you. That, that life will come to an end, right? God said, work out your own salvation. God will teach you how to fight for yourself. If you can at least just tuck into his word, it starts with the word of God, then everything else develops from there. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day.